Hello and welcome to Six Days of To start off this week's news, the largest king penguin colony has shrunk by almost 90% since the 1980s. The papers that published these findings say that there could be only around 60,000 penguin pairs left in the colony. This was discerned from photos taken in 2015 and 2017, and in a similar operation conducted in the 1980s, around half a million penguins were seen. Now I'm sure some of you at some point have asked yourselves, could bacteria go extinct? Well it turns out they can, and quite badly too. This new study contradicts earlier widely believed theories that microbe taxa never really went extinct. It was just a theory though, because of course it is very difficult to study the past lives of bacteria as they rarely leave fossils. Through research though, scientists have discovered that tens of thousands of species of bacteria have gone extinct in just the last million years, and when we're talking about extinctions that's a long time. On July 26th, the first global mapping of marine wilderness was completed, and it showed some disturbing results. A wilderness is an area that holds some of the most ocean's crucial marine diversity, places truly blooming with life. But now, only a small percentage of the ocean can be classified as wilderness, 13%. Researchers say these findings show a dire need to protect what remains of our marine wilderness before it's too late. This week we've also got some answers into how our skeletons, as well as those of other vertebrates, first originated. The vertebrates that survive today have skeletons made of four main types of tissue, bone, cartilage, dentine and enamel. A group of 400 million year old fish, known as heterostracons, are the oldest known vertebrates to have a mineralized skeleton like ours. But it's long been unknown what kind of tissue their skeletons were made of. Now, researchers have x-rayed their fossils, discovering that they were composed of a kind of tissue called aspidin, providing some interesting insight into how our skeletons evolved over time. Homo sapiens are the last surviving hominin on the planet, with all the others having died out. Why this is has never been completely clear, but a new review suggests that humans as we know them today were able to survive because of their ability to adapt to diverse and extreme environments. This is something that other hominids didn't do, and therefore didn't spread out as far across the earth. This would also explain the widespread and diverse nature of Homo sapiens, where our relatives stuck to more temperate environments, we were able to move into colder and hotter climates. Exceptional fossilization can sometimes result in traces of soft tissues becoming preserved, leading to a great time for paleontologists. A study published this week demonstrated how creating synthetic fossils can also produce the same result, with recently dead animal remains being covered in sediment and compacted at high pressures, causing a very similar look to actual exceptionally preserved fossils. This new technique of what are called maturation experiments will allow all sorts of new hypotheses about fossilization to be tested. Thank you very much for watching this episode of 7 Days of Science, well 6 days, because I'm going on holiday on Wednesday, so I'm afraid that any news tomorrow, or today for you, I will have missed, unless it's very big in which case Ben will fill you in. I hope you have a lovely week and we'll see you on Sunday. 